ago, my daughter and I were on an airplane. Um, she's only five years old. And as we're sitting there, we get our seatbelts on, the stewardess goes up to the front of the plane and she gives the little safety talk. And um, as we're waiting to go, to go to the runway to take off, the plane starts backing out away from the gate. And we've done this. Anybody that's been on an airplane knows that this is the drill. You back out and then you start going forward and you get onto the runway so you can take off. But my little five-year-old daughter turned to me and she said something that was really interesting. She said, that's really cool. Sometimes you have to go backwards before you can go forwards. Oh. And I thought, wow. wow, genius, you know? How true that is. I first realized that back in 2005 as I was preparing for the 2006 Olympic Games. Um, I was ranked first in the world going into the 2006 Olympics. And my goals, my sights were set high. I wasn't just planning on going to the Olympics, I was planning on winning a gold medal. And at our Olympic trials that fall, just before the 2006 Olympics, I had just finished a practice run. I had just gone down the track. And the way that we get back up to the track is that we'll be sitting there waiting for a truck to come take us up to the top. So a truck comes, we get our sled, we walk into this truck, and we go and he takes us back up to the top of the track so we can come down again. Well, we had just finished our second practice run for the day and our day was finished. We were waiting for another girl to come down on a skeleton sled. And I remember just sitting there talking with a few of my teammates. And as we were talking, um, we heard a loud noise coming from behind us. And we kind of thought that was interesting. After you've been around this sport long enough, you realize that there's different sounds. A skeleton sled has a nice little hum to it. It just goes Ooh, but it was a lot louder than that. And we turned and we looked at the finish line, which was probably 200 meters away, 150 meters away. And when we turned to look at the finish line, we saw a four-man bobsled coming towards us, flying at about 70 miles an hour. Now bobsleds, they have, there was, this was a four-man bobsled, and they have a brakeman. And what that brakeman's job is to do is to pull up on a handle which will drag a claw into the ice and they can stop pretty quickly. When we turned and we looked and we saw this boss lift coming towards us, we realized that they weren't pulling those brakes. And uh, right when I saw that coming, I took a step. There was actually a staircase behind me, just like, just like the podium is behind me. There was a staircase behind me. And so I had to take a step to jump out of the way and right when I did that, the boss hit me from behind. This was just three months before the Olympic Games. After I get to the hospital, I'm laying there ready to go in for surgery, and, and the doctor's like, okay, we have to give you an epidural, like kind of like what you have when you have a baby, it numbs you, and you'll be out. And I said, okay, that sounds great. So I remember him going through this process telling me that I'd be having this medication. First of all, I don't think a doctor should talk to a patient that's already not coherent about what they're about to do, but I guess I was the only one that was there to talk about it. So um, they gave me the medicine, and I remember I was out, and I go into surgery, and all of a sudden, I wake up, and I'm like, what is going on? And I look down, and there's four or five doctors around me, and one of them has a hammer, and they're hammering a rod into my leg, and I'm like, uh, I couldn't feel it because I was numb, right? But I'm awake and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm looking around and the anesthesiologist starts walking by me and I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, I don't think I'm supposed to be awake for this. <laughs> and he looks at me and he's like, he's like, he puts the sheet over my head and he's like, and I'm like, I can still hear you. Like, oh, I still hear you talking to him. So I went and they ended up, they must have given me more about this. <laughs> As I'm sitting there in this room, it finally hit me. My Olympic dream is gone. All the sacrifice, all the time, everything that I had put in to becoming and wanting to become an Olympian had vanished in a split moment and there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't have a choice. In that moment, my choices were all taken away from me. And at that moment, I, I really did comprehend the extent of my injury that I would be unable to compete in the Olympics. So a tear started coming down my cheek. And I really wasn't crying hard. It was one or two, one or two tears coming down my cheeks. And right when those tears started going down my cheeks, my doctor walked in. 
and she had her clipboard and she looks down and she looks at me and she sees me crying and she said now this is the this is the best lesson I've ever learned she said why are you crying <laughs> well first of all I wanted to be like you go get hit by a bobsled and see if you cry, you know, like you go out, that happens, you see how you feel. And she just said, I was speechless. I couldn't believe that somebody could be so unsympathetic to, to not have any feeling for how I, how, for what I was going through. And she said, why are you crying? You have two choices. You can either look back and be upset and angry at what had happened to you. You can be frustrated and say, why me? You can be stuck in your sorrow and be depressed about it, or you can choose to move forward. We always have a choice to make. No matter how bad things get, no matter how off course we get, no matter what obstacles come our way, we always have a choice. We can look back and be upset and angry that something fell through, that something didn't go the way that it hit, that was planned. Or we can take it and we can look forward and say, all right, this is what it is. Now, how am I going to get to here? Rechart your course. <laughs> the moral of this story, the lesson that I learned, where you look is where you'll go. I was looking right at that wood and I hit the wood. Where you look is where you go. Where are you looking? Where are your sights set? Do you aim high? Sometimes, like my daughter said, sometimes we have to move backwards before we can go forwards again. But sometimes, I've noticed in my own career, I've, I've been so focused on my accomplishments that I've done, I'm looking back, that I'm not able to look forward and set my sights high. Where are we looking? So that, that leads me to my third, the third lesson that I've learned. Oh my god, I do need help. Maybe I'll just show up and, and I'll be the best. That would be great. Finding success every day starts with direction. And direction, if you want to have a direction to your life, you have to start with a plan. And if you want a plan, you need to start with goals. Every single day that I compete, every single day that I train, every single day, I write down goals for myself. Mm -hmm.